Hello everyone, Christina here. Today I'm going to talk about pseudotyping of viral vectors. With the growing popularity of viral vectors in the field of cell and gene therapy, pseudotyping has become an integral part of virus production workflow. Pseudotyping is the process of generating a recombinant viral vector with an outer shell derived from a foreign virus. While envelope viruses, such as lentiviruses, have a lipid bilayer embedded with proteins as their outer shell, non-envelope viruses, such as adeno-associated viruses or AAVs, possess a protein-based capsid as their outer shell. Both enveloped and non-enveloped viruses can be pseudotyped by packaging them within an outer shell derived from a virus different from the one used as the source of the viral genome. Let's use lentivirus as an example to take a closer look at how pseudotyping is performed and what its advantages are. Lentivirus has emerged as the most popular viral vector of choice for applications requiring stable integration of target genes into the host genome. It is derived from the human immunodeficiency virus type 1, or HIV-1, which is a single-stranded RNA virus belonging to the retrovirus family. Lentiviruses can infect both dividing and non-dividing cells. The first step for viruses to enter host cells is to attach themselves onto the cell surface. This is achieved when specific receptor proteins on the virus bind to complementary receptors on the host cell membrane. For wild type HIV-1, the entry of the virus into the host cell is initiated by the binding of the viral envelope glycoprotein GP120 to the host cell protein CD4. This allows HIV-1 to infect only cells which express CD4 on their surface. To expand the virus's ability to infect a wider range of cell types known as its tropism, a lentivirus pseudotyped with the envelope glycoprotein of the vesicular stomatitis virus, or VSVG, is typically used. VSVG can bind to members of the LDL receptor family, which are expressed on the surface of a wide range of cell types. This enables lentivirus pseudotyped with VSVG to exhibit a significantly expanded tropism compared to wild-type HIV-1. Pseudotyping with VSVG also helps to achieve higher lentiviral titers by conferring stability to the viral particles. To produce a VSVG pseudotype lentiviral vector, a third-generation lentivirus packaging system is employed. In these systems, the lentiviral genome is split into four plasmids, and all non-essential genes are eliminated to enhance their safety, followed by their co-transfection into HEC293T cells to produce replication-incompetent lentiviral particles. These plasmids consist of a lentiviral transfer plasmid expressing the gene of interest flanked by modified versions of the viral long terminal repeat, two packaging plasmids expressing essential structural and regulatory genes, and an envelope plasmid expressing the envelope protein used for pseudotyping the virus. For producing VSVG pseudotype lentivirus, an envelope plasmid using the VSVG envelope protein is used. Using this same principle, it is possible to generate pseudotype lentiviruses harboring envelope proteins from a variety of other viruses, including coronavirus, rabies virus, Ebola virus, Gibbon ape leukemia virus, murine leukemia virus, Mercola virus, and Ross River virus. The most common application of pseudotyping is altering host tropism, which I already discussed with lentivirus as an example. Like lentivirus, AAV can also be pseudotyped to alter host tropism by mixing the genome of one AAV serotype with the capsid of another AAV serotype. Several novel AAV serotypes with improved tropism or higher transduction efficiencies have been developed utilizing this approach. For example, AAV2-9 derived by packaging the AAV2 genome into an AAV9 capsid achieves a much higher transduction efficiency and wider distribution in the central nervous system compared to AAV2-2, in which both the viral genome and the capsid are derived from AAV2. For some pseudotyped AAVs, their host tropism has been significantly expanded by packaging the viral genome into a hybrid capsid derived from multiple AAV serotypes. AAVDJ, for example, harbors the AAV2 genome within a hybrid capsid derived from eight AAV serotypes and exhibits high transduction efficiencies across multiple tissues including retina, lung, liver, heart, and kidney. 
Directed evolution is a widely used approach for developing such hybrid capsid variants with improved properties and involves the generation of highly diverse AAV capsid libraries by various methods including error-prone PCR, random peptide display, DNA family shuffling, or in silico design. Since viral envelope proteins play a critical role in facilitating the entry of viruses into host cells, pseudotype viruses are widely used for studying viral entry mechanisms and for the identification of novel cellular receptors. This is particularly beneficial for highly pathogenic viruses such as Ebola, Zika and coronavirus, which typically require a BSL-3 or BSL-4 containment when used directly. However, Lentivirus or VSV pseudotypes with envelope proteins from such high-risk viruses can be safely handled in a regular BSL-2 facility. This not only reduces the high costs associated with a high containment laboratory, but also significantly reduces the risk of exposure for researchers working with such viruses. Moreover, pseudotype viruses offer the flexibility to incorporate marker genes such as GFP, or luciferase into the viral genome which facilitates efficient tracking of the viral particles following host cell infection. The ability to produce pseudotype viruses relatively easily and quickly makes them indispensable research tools in the event of viral outbreaks as witnessed with the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Lentiviruses and VSVs pseudotyped with the spike envelope proteins of the first identified SARS-CoV-2 lineage and its recently emerged variants were utilised by several groups to understand how specific S-protein mutations found in these variants contribute to their enhanced pathogenicity and transmissibility. Neutralization assays utilising S-protein pseudotype viruses have been highly instrumental in evaluating the efficacy of approved COVID-19 vaccines against the emerging variants, as well as in the screening of novel antiviral therapeutics. And last but not least, viruses pseudotyped with envelope glycoproteins of infectious viruses are also utilised to vaccinate against viruses and mount neutralising immune responses in the event of an actual viral infection. The FDA-approved Ebola Zaire vaccine live, known as Ervibo, is an Ebola vaccine developed by pseudotyping vesicular stomatitis virus with the envelope glycoprotein of Zaire Ebola virus. Here at VectorBuilder, we have a variety of pseudotyping options available. In addition to VSVG pseudotype lentivirus and VSV, we can produce pseudotype viruses carrying the spike envelope proteins of various SARS-CoV-2 lineages. We can also pseudotype lentiviruses and VSVs with envelope proteins derived from other coronavirus species or any other virus upon request. Moreover, we have a vast in-house collection of AAV serotypes and can generate pseudotyped AAVs to help you achieve high transduction efficiencies across a wide variety of target tissues. We can also design and build highly diverse AAV capsid libraries via any mutagenesis or combinatorial approach to help you with your directed evolution projects. Get your project started by emailing service at vectorbuilder.com and a member of the Vector Builder team will be in touch soon to continue the conversation. You can find more information about our exceptional products and services at vectorbuilder.com and on our social media channels. Let us know what you thought of this video and tell us what other topics you'd like us to cover.